Hi guys, it's, it's me, just on the scene again. And for this video that dedicated to the month of Halloween, October in 2024, I have with me a movie that I didn't know what to make of at first. <clears throat> Don't be afraid of the dark. It was a, it was a very interesting movie. In it, I, I thought it'd be like another uh, movie about a creepy kid, you know, um, like the, the omen, or like um, a uh, orphan, or something like children of the Corn, something like that. But it would just be a lot different, a lot more uh, unique in that regard. And number one, well, number two. <laughs> The main star of the movie is Kitty Holmes. So I thought that girl Kitty was going to be the main star of the movie. But I guess not. No. The Kitty in this one is, um... Um... Bailey Madison. And one day she's awesome in this movie because um <clears throat> it's not so much about her but her reaction to what goes on in the movie and she comes and her husband Guy Pierce and um they're um well let me let me start the beginning of the movie. First off, um we, we get a little introduction in which the owner of that, this old Gothic mansion has um, some crazy going on in the neighborhood. So, you go to investigate, and, and there's also, also this maid woman comes down to see if the chick will buy in the basement of the large house. So, um, we see that the guy ends up attack, attacking the woman. And um, we see a very gruesome sight in which this guy ends up taking a chisel to her teeth and then he made her down on it. And for those of you who have a problem with your teeth, a cavity or just don't like the death, it's like, ooh. No, I felt that right here. Right in the kisser. It also reminded me of when uh, Tom Hanks took the uh, ice skate to his face in the movie Castaway. But what was when I could get to that? We'll get to that. We'll get we we'll hit that movie. No pun intended. So anyway. Then we get the the, uh, the addition of the home family with, with Guy Pierce playing the guy Alex and and the uh, Daily Madison playing Sally. Now at first I thought that since she was the headliner, I thought that um Key Holmes would be the main star of the show of the movie. I thought she would the little kid. But um, this movie has been in 2011, so unless he comes as a kind of vampire or something, that can't happen. You know, they, they can't go back in time to pull back and the really kid and make this movie, which is all fine and good. So, once the guy, once the, yeah, the guy was murdered the, the housekeeper, he ends up being pulled into this, um, furnace uh, in the basement, the central furnace. He gets responsible for doing the whole house, making the whole warm. And, um, they, they focus on this furnace as, like, the main spiritual nexus point. And we're like, why? And then when the other family moves in, the more modern family moves into it, we find out 
There's some very interesting things. Like for example, the Sully is wondering why why it's so um why it's so um oriented toward that why you can hear voices from it and stuff. Until her father takes it out. Her father is named Alex and when Alex takes it out he has to ear to it. And really as he's about to the, here's something. Some something comes through the gate like a little, like a little metal stick comes through the the, the gate, and right as it's about to pierce the ear, he moves away from it. Even though if you turn around, you could, you will be able to see whatever it was in Pokemon. So it goes unheard of. And for the rest of the movie, well, most of the rest of the movie, they, they think that these happens on the house, or all, all of Sally's fault. That, you know, that what the, the library scene is all, is all her fault, that it all get messed up because of her. And they say that, you know, that she's going nuts, and that she's throwing you know, on her own property, her own room because she said um, there's a boogeyman or something in in the in the wall around the bed or something. But we like we the audience see that something's not right. The toys are coming alive or something something else is coming alive and just throwing everything for, for her and blaming the kid. Kinda of like Chuck kinda of like that with the game child play. And we chuck games and such like that old toy, old toy story for that matter. So anyway, the toys get destroyed and, you know, and stuff like that. But then something slowly decided, you know, enough is enough. I don't want the whole world to I'm crazy for the rest of my life. So she defies the planet and uses one of the bad pull away camera, you know, the, of the developing cameras, take a picture of these things, these little uh, gremlin monster things, the little ghouls and goblin things that, that, like, I don't really know if they're really goblins, but they're more like gremlins that satisfy stuff for you. And she has, has it, like, um, set up in, in, the, in the house that she couldn't be able to um, take pictures as proof of their existence. So she ends up, um, <clears throat> the parents have like a big open, open house type policy type thing where they have like, a big gala party there and um, like, okay, I'm going to take a picture of them in the plants so that I could show my parents that I'm not going completely nuts. I mean, she had, she got called by a psychiatrist to find out that the girl is like, normal and that everything fine and dandy. And, um, so anyway, she ends up going into, um, <clears throat> she ends up making, like, drawings of the, of the little beastly things. And, um, uh, the pretty accurate to what was the uh, in previous works of art. Yeah. You know, the beast creature thing. And the funny thing is that um she comes like what why are they so accurate to this? So then they have the big part here with a bunch of guests and things and the girl takes a picture of these little gremlins in inaction. But the thing is that, again, the parents won't listen to her. They won't listen to the proof of the, of the contact. And uh, the kid ends up uh, crying wolf the wind, like Cassandra from mythology. And uh, at, one, at one point or another, these things and invading her personal space, going underneath her bed sheets, 
bed sheets and uh, invading your privacy that way. You know, the ones whose face are located under the bed, the need to get under it. And it does, and then it's like, oh shit. So anyway, they, they go into the library with the, with the camera, and the girl would try to take a picture of the creature. She did take a picture of something, and, uh, but she tries to, one of them, get the bookshelf. No, when it went like a, a secret passage, more or less the basement, and um, th then it's like um, <clears throat> she crushed with one of many on when he and she closed the bookshelf on him, kind of like in that, kind of like in um, the movie Young and Frankenstein. I felt like um, put the candlestick back. By the way, I just found out a few hours ago that Terry Carr has passed away. So, rest in peace, sweet, beautiful angel. In any case, it, they have um, the parents still think, you know, what the hell is going on? You know, beg, stop the party and stuff. So, but this is your proof. Yeah, you got the a piece of the arm stuck in the bookshelf. Can you just look up and see the thing in the wall or look at the picture and stuff? And, and the father, you know, it's so hard to kind of believe that something's not right with, with this picture. He realized that there are some, uh, something involved that not the kid's fault. And he in, in the garage, I'd go to help or something, and the little creatures end up, um, um, tying up his, one of his legs, and yank him down from off the car top, and he's trying to reach up for the, the garage opener, the way opening mechanism, so that he can get out. But unfortunately, they won't let him do that. And even though they're like maybe maybe a little bigger than this DVD case, you know, by, by height wise, they're still pretty powerful. They're pretty strong fuckers. And they actually they actually dunk him down, and they hot cut the kid and take the camera away from her so that he can't he can't. Reveal them to the rest of the world. Take it to their patient. And they actually assault a mother. He holds. Um. Can't name Kim. So they take Kim in and look at the side of the patient. And they want to. They want to cure. Now. Also. For some reason. The housekeeper, one of the housekeepers, does, I mean, one of the garden's keepers, doesn't want the kid to go into the basement. Because in the basement is where the furnace is. This is before they find out about it. So they probably probe the door to it, to it, and they end up exploring the area. That's how they find out about the, the, um, the basement and the furnace. I probably, I probably should have got, gotten into that in the beginning, but we're just going to do it, right? So, anyway. <clears throat> you see that, that Sully is trying to break free, break free from these creatures. And creatures like, you know, roaring at the kid to stop it and put it down and stuff. I don't know if they know English good enough. But they, they do like gibberish speak, kind of like the minions from the minions, and that's the common franchise. But anyway, they, they, they do this, and you see a study up there with the, the big heavy flashlight crushing the little guy, the little work. 
rid of foresight. And you know what? They don't feel really, um, shy away from all about war and all the splutter and all the uh, chunks of meat coming off of it. Or the splutter noise. You know, it's very wet. And it's great. It's, it reminds me of that part in um, Labyrinth where Huggle sprays down the um, Love fair Fairies. I think it's also implied that these two are like Mewtwo Fairies or something like that. Anyway, the 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 Huggle kid drag her down, drag the mother down too. And he intended to put the 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 mother in, into the basement, into the sub basement area that I will be keeping them. I them a lot this way. They uh, they they recollect and drag her into the uh, the first area, which. I, I don't really, I really don't like the ending of this movie because he, he has the father helping the kid out and helping, and then you think that the kid would say, don't, don't help me, help, my, help mommy, mommy needs your help more than I do. And they, they, I force her into the, the little narrow uh, opening there, right, much in the same way as Freddy, uh, Kruger did the mother in the in the um first um Nightmare Before Christmas Nightmare Elm Street movie you know, during that last street sequence that it was shut the door to the door and um he dra they drag her down into uh, the pit of the, 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 I like to imagine at the bottom of the big chasm there they have a big um a big uh, pot or a big cauldron just for her, just for tea homes. And it, it's very really funny that um, you could just them putting potatoes and carrots and corn and stuff in, into this pot and then tea forms lots of greed. Now, the reason why I don't, I don't like this, this ending is because when she gets pulled down there, the father, Alex, it's like, he goes over to help her out and fits himself to the hole in the furnace. And where the geek belong, belonged. But then he's like, no, can't help your mother out. She's gone by. See ya, honey. I love you it, it, during the honeymoon, but bye. You know, he gave, gave me a beautiful card. Give me like uh, 10, 10 years of your life, but not, then you go bye bye. See ya. You know, that, that doesn't make sense. You know, if that were my woman, I, I would immediately go in after her. No, no question that's like, where is that? Like, no, I'm going to get, I'm going to get her. I, I'm going to, I'm going to take this furnace apart and go. Go propel down in, into a uh, big rope. No, I'm not gonna let him become a little, little um, a meal for the team fucker. Trump supporters. But, um, yeah. As for the dog portion of it, I don't, I don't see why they had to go with W for the dark because this movie was. There were very many lit. Areas in the movie where the, where the troll demons came from. I, I, don't, I don't get it. But well, I liked it. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna lie, I did like it. And as such, I give, I give this my happy face to the whole Because it was a good concept. But again, they, they used the same trope of, you know, having children that see something and they don't in no way will lose them. They they would go in original to the angle of, you know, that the kids can see these things or hear these things 
because you took them more, more of them. It's a typical, so like, um, creatures, a supernatural creatures and whatnot. So that's that. And, um, <clears throat> it was, it was a good funny movie in that, in that regard. If you look beyond all the stereotypes and tropes that they use for other things to do. So, I thank you for watching my view on Don't Be Afraid of the Dark. It's a good movie with, with, uh, for, for, for people. So, like, uh, I was in, like, maybe teenagers and stuff like that. Not for little kids, no, probably excuse me, Jack Shadow. But, um, I, I did this video for, um, m the month of Halloween, October. 2024. <clears throat> if you guys like like what you see here, you want to see more of my videos and such. If you don't like to comment and share on this video, or you can subscribe to my channel. Well, if you got any more ideas for any future content and stuff, you, you can always <coughs> you can always uh, <coughs> call me or text me at six three one seven zero seven three seven zero seven. Or if you want, you can comment me by following me on Twitter or X Facebook for at P Nelson Pro. Well, if you, if you want on top of that, you can also reach me on uh, my, <clears throat> my email address at JJ's Viewing Channel at gmail.com. That's JJ's Viewing Channel at gmail.com. So remember, I see all you horror fans out there who like creepy houses and things. My man, who let me borrow this, told me that it was something in the, in the house. It, it really reminded me about Brom the Boy, or Brom the Boy 2. There's something in the house. I also liked many of the other characters, like the front keeper, he was nice. It made me a little bit of my town. Um, yeah. Cool, cool movie, cool concept, cool, cool everything. Peace out, my little golden goblins. Happy Halloween. And, um, <clears throat> and, um, aloha, guys. I'll see you in the next video. To all you girls and guys. Mm, 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 mm,